Welcome to Alex G's Aquarium, everybody. Today, I want to talk about pump maintenance. There's one thing in this hobby, no matter what kind of aquarium you keep, whether it's fresh water, salt water, brackish water, outdoor ponds, indoor large facilities, you have pump maintenance. It's something that is a very critical thing to do as an aquarium hobbyist to keep your system and life support systems functioning the way they should. Today I want to go through some of the things I do when I go through routine pump maintenance. Of course, before we could do pump maintenance, we need some pumps. Let me get a couple of them right here. There we go, we got them. These are the JBO pumps that I keep on my DIY protein skimmer. Now if you've been watching my videos for a while, I built my whole DIY skimmer and I even made DIY needle wheel impellers to put on the pumps driving it, which is what these two pumps do. These are JBO 15,000 pumps. They had just standard water impellers in them, but I changed them out to custom DIY needle wheels and these pumps are only meant for doing the air injection portion of the water flow through the protein skimmer, but they're still important pumps. These drive my skimmer to ensure that it is actually going to be able to do its job. And you can see I have my DIY Venturis on here as well. We'll go through those in another video. Getting back to pump maintenance though, I'm going to start with some of the absolute basics. It's not just about the pump that's in the tank. You have got to look at the other pieces of your pump to make sure that they are all in working order. I'm talking about a DC controller if you have one. Look at look it over make sure that everything looks okay these do get quite warm and because they get so hot you have to look for any kind of signs of damage from the heat take the time to even smell the ends of the cables to see if you smell electrical burning or something melting in there shorts and other electrical faults can happen sometimes immediately or sometimes they can take their time but if you take the time to inspect everything Look over all your cords, make sure there's no signs of corrosion, rust, melting. These can really save you from having to deal with problems. Um, I've taken a look at everything in here. Well, they are warm. There's no signs of melting or shorting activity. Same thing on this one. So the power supply looks good. And that's a critical component of any pump is to ensure the power supply or if it's an AC pump, that the cord looks in good shape. You know, look down the end of it. Feel to see if any of the insulation's broken on it. These are things that are really important. I've already done this with the other pump, so I'm not going to pull the other one off right now. I still actually have to mount this one. If it was mounted, I'd, I'd just do these checks with it all connected up. We'll put these controller components to the side for now. Because we don't really want to get them wet if we can help it. I want to do the same thing on the other ends. It's always a good idea to take your towel, run down the electrical cord, ensure that any water that's on it is dried up. You don't want it to drip down the end of the cord, get to the pin connector and let salt water in there because it will corrode it, which is going to unfortunately end the life of your pump unless you're willing to try and change an end on it, which most people aren't ready to do because they've come from the factory that way. Once you have that taken care of, now we're ready to start looking at some of the pump maintenance itself. Now, all this plumbing is still on these. None of it's glued, and I have a few particular reasons why with this DIY skimmer. One, it really doesn't make much of a difference. If something were to fall off, it can't harm anything. Everything is submerged in over a foot of water. What it does do, though, it allows me to do some maintenance. And putting these on and taking them off can also be a little bit of a chore. So it allows me to get a little easier access. And then if I decide to do any kind of modifications later on with this, I don't have to worry about trying to cut plumbing apart. Because it's a little more difficult to access, keeping the pieces all separated, it tends to help me a little bit. Now, on occasion, a pump has come off of the skimmer, but it's so rare, even with these just pushed in place, it kind of locks into position and I don't have to worry about it. First thing we got to do though is just remove this piece of plumbing. 
I'm gonna scrub these down just to get any of the marine buildup that's on them off. It's not a huge deal, but since I already have them removed and they're exposed to the air, I can go ahead and remove that marine buildup a little later on. Now we move on to the pumps themselves. Now it's important before you get into taking the pump apart that you first inspect it to see if there's anything wrong on the outside of it. Are there any cracks, large gouges in the plastic? Anything that looks out of the ordinary on the outer casing of this pump, underneath it. You know, there could be some critters down here that you just want to try and save. Or it could be that there's something really wrong with the pump. And then understand how to take it apart. These JBOs or JCOD pumps, the seal for the motor is in the back. And there's a little cover plate on here the cord goes in. And you might not think anything of it. But to actually expose the seal of the motor, you have to go back there and open it up. Now just looking at it, I don't see any signs that it's been leaking or it's damaged. There's no corrosion or substances leaking out, which is always a really good sign. Let me leave that little cover off for the moment and I inspect this other one. Same thing, the, the back of this looks like it's in good shape. No kind of issues or problems there. Cords look like they're in good shape. And the outside of this, other than having a bunch of pineapple sponges covering it, which I will remove here shortly, looks to be in really good shape. I'm not seeing anything physically wrong with it. No cracks, damage. And then it's important to take that step and remove the little handles here as well. Make sure there's nothing underneath. There's some dirt under there, of course. A little marine buildup. That's okay though. I'm going to take these few pieces here that I've taken off, give them a quick cleaning. Once we have that done, we'll get into actually taking the pumps apart and some of the things that you should look for once you get inside the inner workings of your pump. Now we can focus on cleaning out the inside of the pump itself. All pumps are different in this respect, but most of them should have an access to the balloon, which is what houses your impeller. Now, with these Jago pumps, there are four screws around it that you need to take off. I'm just going to take them off one by one. And this is actually only the second time that I've taken these off to see how. The screws have been loosened up for both of these pumps now. The balloons are ready to come off. I haven't opened these pumps up since the last time I installed one of these pumps at a second DIY needle wheel impeller. And I'm not really sure how they're holding up, to be honest. And that's in part why I wanted to do this maintenance, was not only to check the pump over, but also see how the needle wheel impellers are doing. Start off with this one here, see how it looks. Well, this needle wheel impeller is intact. I don't see anything missing yet. We'll pull it out of here in a second. Always make sure that when you're flipping things around, don't do it near drains or any place where this stuff could fall. Because, unfortunately, it goes down the drain, you might have a little bit of fun trying to get out of the trap. Hopefully there is one. I'm going to inspect the inside of the balloon. There's no signs of cracking or wear damage. Some nice little slime built up in there we're going to clean out in a few minutes. Let's see how the first and original needle wheel I installed is doing. Again, the volute looks good. No cracks or signs of damage. Let's see how the impeller looks. It appears everything is here. Now these Jabo pumps, they just pull right out. You got the ceramic shaft here, and then you have your magnet on here as well. And just, I can feel there's kind of a sliminess to this. That's pretty normal with a pump that's been running for a little while. And just looking at the needle wheel impeller, it looks like we're 100% intact. It's still, it's not trying to spin around or anything. Looks good. So we're going to take this, set it aside for the moment. We're going to look in here. 
just to see how it looks. I'm not seeing any signs of heavy wearing or damage. Let's pull this one out as well. This one also looks good. No other visible signs of damage on the pump. The impeller itself looks like it's in good shape. Don't see any problems. There you have it. The two DIY needle wheels are still intact. And they've been going now for a little while, a couple months at least, and that's good. I'm glad to see that they're in good shape. Also, there's some, some silicone O-rings here. Those both look like they're intact. There's no damage on those. You want to inspect to see if there's any kind of gouging or wear marks in these magnets. Now, it might not occur very often on a pump like this, but if you do have small pumps that are like for hang on back filters, for instance, where the impeller sits vertically and debris could fall into it, it's not uncommon to see wear lines in here from pieces of gravel or sand getting stuck in the pump. It can happen on horizontal pumps too if they manage to suck something in. But always keep an eye out for that kind of damage. If it does occur, you gotta make sure you clear out whatever debris is in there. And if it's a plastic sealed magnet that has split, it might start to rust or corrode. It might need to be replaced. These ceramic ones usually are in good shape. So always just be careful you don't drop this so you don't shatter the ceramic shaft or the magnet. I'm gonna get these pumps cleaned up now with the toothbrush and the sink and then we'll go ahead and do a reassembly. Gotten all the cleaning done. When I did the cleaning, I did keep all the parts separate so that each pump is using the same exact parts it had before. It should not make a difference when you're cleaning the same types of pumps, but sometimes if the parts have all been fit together and they're working and they're wearing normal together, keep them together. It's a lot easier you might not have something that fits exactly the same way. They look like the same pump. I could see slight tiny differences though, and I'd just rather take a little bit of caution and use the same exact parts. We're gonna start by putting the silicone gaskets back on here that seal up the impeller housing. You just kind of sit right on top of there. And then this plastic housing and the JVOs, it has one way that it likes to sit, and that's all fit in there. There we go. They're both fit in there and looking good the way that they should. So you can see the two needle wheel impellers up against each other here. And before I go any further, I just want to get the handles reinstalled on here. Those in, we'll put our little rear covers back on. And this is why it's important you always be careful how you pick these pumps up with these JBOs. If you pick it up the wrong way, it'll just fall right off. So the little cover here just snaps right on, and then you're all set. You can carry it this way, just don't tip it downward like this. It can fall off. When I very first got these pumps, I kind of learned that the hard way. I'm now ready to do the final assembly on these pumps. And of course, like anything else, be careful around your DIY stuff or needle wheel impellers. I smacked this one with the volute just right and snapped one of the needles off. Not a big deal, I'm not worried about it, it's not going to hurt it, but it's done is done. Now it's just time to put the volutes back on. Both pumps have been reassembled now, ready to reinstall on the protein scammer and fire them back up. That's today's video on pump maintenance, I hope you enjoyed it, if you did, Go ahead, give me that thumbs up. Let me know that you like the content. If you have comments or questions on anything I did for pump maintenance or anything about the 1600 gallon system, go ahead and leave them down below in the comments section. I will try to get to them as quickly as I can. And if you have not subscribed to this channel already, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. I put out new content every week, talk about different parts of the 1600 gallon system, whether it be Success, failure, DIY projects, maintenance, general care tips, just general updates. Put out content for the channel every week. Thanks again for watching everybody and I will see you on the next video. Alright, skimmer cups cleaned and ready to go. The pumps go!
tools are missing. All my DIY needle meals are missing. What is going on here? What is that noise? I have to go find out. What is going on here? These pumps are supposed to be hooked up to the protein skimmer and the sump and running again so the skimmer's working. I don't get it. What? And why are all these impeders out here? I don't understand. What's going on? Ah, oh, I get it. See, I made two different types of DIY needle wheel impellers. A double layer needle wheel and a single layer needle wheel. I guess it's time to put these two needle wheels up against each other in a head-to-head -head matchup. Find out which one of them is actually better or if they work the same. Tune in Sunday and find out who the winner is. I will see you there.